in in sports cards, I wouldn't say things are going poorly, but they're not going particularly well uh, economically for people, right? They're not. But in NFTs, the NFT kind of vibe reminds me a lot of sports cards last year. You know, it had the run up. Cards were setting record prices. The Jordan hit seven hundred sixty thousand. You know, people said if you would sell, you're not going to be able to get back in, right? So it was like that FOMO that don't sell your Jordan because you won't be able to get back in. Here we are a year later. Jordan's still at record highs, but it's nowhere near that seven hundred sixty thousand. So I'm curious, you know, the NFT space also feels a little bit like that, you know, where every day we're seeing these crazy, crazy runs. Just like we were seeing them last year, Cage, in January, we were seeing cards hit insane record highs. I think there was a uh, record LeBron sale last year, you know, all that stuff. Do you have any take on the market? Do you have any take on what people should expect? How are you thinking about it? You know, because we know these bull runs don't last forever and we know bear runs don't last forever. Yeah. What, what, what are you thinking about right now, economically speaking? No, I mean, the card market, it's pretty straightforward, you know. Um, I would implore people who are listening to take a good look at their collection and then take a good look at themselves. It's one of those look in the mirror for a second, right? And there's no shame in this, right? If you were somebody who came in chasing, you know, amazing, amazing returns, 10x, 20x, you name it, because it was here, right? Um, I said this to Andrew, it gets very mad at me, but those kind of returns... Andrew explains it very well. He uses a phrase called price discovery. Those kind of returns, they come when there is price discovery, right? They come when no one is buying soccer cards. And then all of a sudden, people are buying soccer cards, and then everyone buys soccer cards. The people who get in it early were able to capture that huge return, right? F1 Joe Burrow cards, cards right now. Joe Burrow that cards is, right now. That is the difference, right? So, it, and when I say take a look at yourself in the mirror, right, it's, do you want to put in the work, right? If you go back literally to the week last year that Joe Burrow hurt himself, we came on here and said, this dude is a buy, but it's not going to be something that pays off for you next week, next month, or maybe it might even take more than a year. And here we are slightly more than a year later. And if you had bought in and been patient, you would have good returns on your Joe Burrow cards, right? But, but that's, difficult because that is based on the performance the on-field performance of a specific player you could say that the same investment in justin herbert at the same time or or you know after the season or beginning of this season with him not making the playoffs would not be the same right you know it's modern cards you name it burrow is still playing and is now going to the super bowl and justin herbert missed the playoffs so um it's a difficult. It's not just throwing. It's not just yeah. throwing art. Well, I mean, you know, anything runs. When there was price discovery, it didn't make a difference. If you had UFC cards, and you were one of the first pers- first people to hold, it didn't make a difference. Whatever it is, UFC cards would have wrestling cards. If you were the market maker or early on it, you did fine. There were multiples there. Now it's more. You have to study. You have to watch the games. You have to prospect a little bit. You have to pick players and hope that you are right or try to get the odds in your favor instead of just all right the hobby it's going to move it's going to move up and here's the 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 real little secret sauce here you at this time it used to be you could just all modern all prospects because if you put five prospects two years ago two of them went crazy Whether they were great or not, they went 10x. Two of them went up a little bit, and the other one stayed flat, even though he was injured and hasn't played for three years, right? Because everything went up, and the rising tide lifts all ships, right? You didn't have to diversify. You were in those high risk because everything new went up. Now, you kind of have to mix in a little bit of the tide is just going to be steady, right? That, that, that could take some of your risk off. We talked about this yesterday, right? Some of the stuff that the on-field performance has done, believe it or not, Tom Brady is now going to fall into this category for the first time in, you know, decades. He's going to fall into there's not much he can do on the field to impact his legacy. His legacy is now written. You know, folks like that, after they're out of the game for a little while, they become a more steady 
slower climber as the market moves and evolves. If you go and take a look at a long enough chart, just like you look at the stock market, right? Any 10 year period, there it's going to be up, right? The card market, if you look at Babe Ruth and you look at a chart and you look at it long enough, it's up. It might not be up 40, 50 X in a year, like some of the other stuff, but um, that's how I feel about the market. I feel like, you know, the collectors who have been here before the ups and the downs, they understand it, um, you know, and you're going to see the, you know, the, the, the part-time carters, the people who came in as investors and became collectors, they're going to have a decision to make whether or not this is worth the grind, whether they enjoy it enough uh, to stay in it without, you know, the ridiculous returns that were there, almost guaranteed. They're all crazy returns. This is the other thing I say to you, whether it's NFT or sports cards. There's someone you can invest in today who in a year is going to be worth 10 times what he's worth now. In some sport, I don't know what it is. It's a tennis player who's going to, you know, show up and, and you know, take over the number one spot in the world. It's a golfer we haven't heard of. It's a, a race car driver who's going to push, you know, Max and Lewis and start winning races. It's a wrestler who, you know, is in NXT and hasn't come up into the big show yet, but is going to win WrestleMania. Um, or someone who's been out for a little while. You know, if you're smart enough to not throw away your Ronda Rousey cards before she came into, you know, the Royal Rumble this past week. The point is there are always going to be plays out there. It's just going to be a little harder for people to find those 10 axes. It's got to be somebody who's in it. And it's the same. You, you draw the correlation with NFTs. Uh, some of our audience hates it. But a lot of the benefits that you get are from being in it. 